come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. No, thank you. <laughs> and you and you. That's what I said. My thank sister. you. You were thinking them. I'm thinking us. Okay. Uh, so we're a movie review podcast that records every week. And new episodes magically appear wherever podcasts are found. Tell you're, you what. You're right. This is magic. This right here. <laughs> magic. Magic. The miracle of modern science. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wonderful. That's a little in joke, but you'll, you'll get know there. what we're talking about once you've seen tonight's movie. Uh, so, hey, do us a favor, will you? Will you give us a like, a star rating? Subscribe wherever you found us because all of that stuff helps with the algorithms and gets us out there so we're found by more people who like the same stuff that you do. Uh, but who are these internet radio superstars that are going to be talking to you tonight? Michaela. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Colin. Colin, what we watched tonight? Tonight we watched... Well, it was because I wanted to actually finish off the summer of canon. Uh, that, in, uh, in a Michaela, proper way. Yeah. In yeah. a way that yeah. felt... Victorious yeah. for canon, a real, yeah. a real send and more for us. Well, yeah. that was that was the attempt. We don't know if they succeeded. What was the last that. one we watched? Hercules. Oh Jesus! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, this skin is the tassels. thing we tried to put it out of our <laughs> mind. Skin, skin tassels. tassels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Michaela started this tradition. Uh, I'd say there were still skin ago. tassels in this movie. Uh, oh, oh. Yeah, that's wow. fair. Wow, yeah. that, that is a, a walk to a dick joke, Sean. That's a walk, man. But it, hey, I'll, I'll give it to you. It's more like a toggle. <laughs> Skin toggle. Skin toggle. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Skin dongle. Yeah. Ah, that's better. Yeah. Skin dongle's better. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Skin dongle. Here oh, this is dongle. gross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're already getting gross, guys. Yeah. Uh, but it's a, the Charles Bronson movie, 10 to Midnight. This is a canon film from the year 1983. Mm-hmm. And directed by who? Directed by uh, Lee J. Thompson or J. J. Lee, Lee Thompson. Thompson yeah. Who uh, he also directed Cape Fear, the original Cape oh, Fear. I mean, he's been around forever. He did the Guns of Navarone. He did, uh, but apparently he was uh, Bronson's favorite director to work with, and they made like five or six movies, I believe, for Canon. Nice. Mm-hmm. If you recognize the titles, Messenger of Death, mm-hmm. Kinjite, Forbidden Subjects. Oh, how about what uh, were those subjects? <laughs> I don't know. I never saw the movie. Murphy's Law, I think, was also okay. a J. Lee Thompson film. Murphy's Law. And Firewalker, the Chuck Norris movie that we maybe should have watched. I, I, it was on my list, you and I kind of regret that, not picking it. You can say that about any Chuck Norris movie besides Delta Force. Delta Force. <laughs> <laughs> I like Delta it, Force. Damn it, they all hated it. Okay, Firewalker's like a like an Indiana Jones knockoff with Ooh. Chuck Norris and Luke yeah. Gossett Jr. I would have yeah. been, been down Anderson. for that. Yeah, yeah. that all sounds directed good. by Jay Lee Thompson, who also did King Solomon's Mines. Never saw it. Oh, yeah. oh, so he's it's made the same movie a couple times, huh? Uh, well, that was not a bad Indiana Jones ripoff, if I remember correctly. Right. But, but I like Firewalker was like a copy of King Solomon's Minds, which was a copy of Indiana Jones. <laughs> copy of so, copy yeah, of yeah, copy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sure, so. Lose something a little bit there? Yep. Yeah. So this is, uh, well, we were talking about before, like, uh, what's our familiarity with Charles Bronson? Because, yeah. well, I just want to set yeah. this up real quick before we answer that question. Uh, Canon is famous for having made movies basically with Chuck Norris and Charles Bronson. Like every year, there was at least one to two movies featuring these two guys coming out. What did they say? It was that they had two piles: the Chuck pile and the Charlie pile, right? They would, yeah, yeah, they, they separated yeah. all the scripts. scripts. Yeah, and very briefly, there was the Stallone pile. Mm-hmm. Very briefly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and then the Va- the Van Damme pile. Mm-hmm. Okay, but uh, Charles Bronson, what are we uh, what are we seeing? Uh, Once Upon a Time in the West, mm-hmm. Magnificent Seven, mm-hmm. um, Great Escape, Great Escape, mm-hmm. yeah, Death Wish, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cause... I don't think I've seen Death Wish. Tell really? You yeah, the movie. I feel like you'd watch watch it and be like, oh no, I have seen this. Like I feel Probably. like that's what would happen yeah. if you Probably. watched it. Yeah, it's actually decent, mm-hmm. and that's kind of the uh, like. In my mind, and I know this isn't true, I know that the, the, the Bronson <laughs> so what are you had saying? a career <laughs> prior to Death Wish uh. that was uh, a solo career. Because it seems like he's always the ensemble guy, mm-hmm. right? He was always right, like the yeah. bit player. Yeah. He was in the House of Wax, you know, the Vince Price, Vince right, Price yeah. House of Wax. Mm-hmm. His real name's uh, Charles Buczynski. Right. And he changed it to Bronson. 
and he was in all Smart these. Smart move. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Charles Buczynski. <laughs> that would have been a really weak title card that came up after his little speech at the beginning of this, mm-hmm. the cold open. Charles Buczynski. There was a Buczynski in the credits, like as, uh, I don't know, didn't oh. catch what it was, but it was some Interesting. kind of. Interesting. Got his nephew a job. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, He's the best boy. But I think like there's movies like The Majestic, right? Was it? No, The Majestic. The mechanic. the mechanic, Mr. Majestic. Mechanic. I was like, he was not in the majestic. Yeah, Mr. No. Ma- Mr. Majestic, right? Am I saying that right? I mean, you're saying the know. words correctly. Yes, <laughs> Mr. and Majestic <laughs> are coming out of your mouth in the right way. But isn't there a mechanic remake with Statham? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's the remake yeah. of yeah. the Bronson yeah. movie. Uh, yeah. yep. And they remade Death Wish recently with uh, Bruce Willis. Yep. Bravo to them. Now there is right when Canon. I think part of the reason they wanted to get Charles Bronson was so they could make more Death Wish movies so they hired the director of the original Death Wish which was Michael Winner and they made Death Wish 2 mm-hmm. and then they also made 3, 4, 5 one of them's called The Crackdown so. Death Wish 4 The Crackdown mm. Death Wish 5, Crack, I don't know don't whatever, know. they when did him said, until he dropped dead when you said Death Wish 2 I almost, I almost went for the electric boogaloo joke Oh, yeah. Death Wish 2 is. Would have been nice if Canon Goldman? just did that. First one? For all of their sequels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Jeff Goldblum's in a Death Wish? He's one of the. To, I need to punks, dive into the. Oh, no, really? In, yeah. One of the street toughs. One of the street toughs. Yeah. I can't imagine that. He seems like a tall, gangly man who you could beat up real easy. He's a street tough? I believe so. Yeah. I don't know. I don't I know. Have you seen that. Streets of Fire? They made some nerdy people in the Street Tops in that <laughs> movie. True. Uh-huh. That's fair. <laughs> right. I agree that was a musical, so. Yeah, but also, <laughs> that, yeah. Willem Dafoe was a... It cancels yeah. out. Maybe yeah. it cancels yeah. out. You know? Willem Dafoe was uh, fairly creepy in that movie. Yeah. yeah. As as Nazi Willem Dafoe. It felt like a Nazi Willem Dafoe. I don't know why. It's the leather the leather yeah. or whatever. Just his yeah. F- yeah. sharp angles. Yeah, he looks like he's <laughs> sharp killing <angles>. Jews. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That makes me wonder, Michael Perry. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> what do you wonder, Wonder Cat? So this movie, right, also came at a time in history when mm. uh, Hollywood was having a infatuation with the slasher film. Am I off base here? No, not at all. No, it would uh, it would appear so. Do you think that's because... This is almost like, the magic year. Yeah, it's, oh, it's so that's close. one year off of the magic year. I think 83 is the magic 83 year. 83 is, we discussed this, like 84 is the one everyone goes back to, 83 was the actual, actual magic year. Actual magic yeah. year, yeah. Mm-hmm. But do you think that's because at the time, like, um, like serial killers were really at the height of current just news in general? Like, nowadays, um, there's a lot of kind of, I don't want to say laws, but kind of like ideas about like you shouldn't promote stardom and celebrity and serial killers because it creates more of them but like in the late 70s early 80s that didn't that thought process didn't really exist right. yeah. so you had like the celebrity serial killers like your ted bundy's and the, uh, the richard ramirez the night stalker and things mm-hmm. like yeah. that you know yeah and so like i wonder if that was just bleeding over because i mean we're kind of seeing that right now with like true crime is really like the past three or four years true crime's really been having a moment and it's still yeah, it it's still going yeah. It re- yeah so it really is indeed well, there is something going on in the in the zeitgeist at the time too. That I mean, obviously, oh, maybe this is a wrap up thing. Uh, just uh, say it. Well, just you don't yeah, want to forget it. There's so. something like yeah. both Cobra, which for some mm-hmm. reason I That's feel what I was thinking, like yeah. a similar movie. Uh, saying it's a similar movie is doing both of them probably. They're on the same path, right? I would yeah. I would agree, but it's, but it's, it's got those up. elements. Yeah, there's a lot of. It feels like there's a lot of Dirty Harry in both of these movies, and yeah. there's a lot of a slasher movie in both of these movies. Yep. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of slasher movie in this movie. This movie is a slasher movie. How is it labeled? Drama? Like, how? what is this looked at it's as? It's in, in the action section. This or something. is an action like, movie? Is there is no movie. action in this movie. It's a no. thriller slash... It's a thriller <laughs> slasher movie with Charles slash Bronson crime in crime procedural. <laughs> like, yeah. it's slash a, courtroom it's, drama. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So maybe... Well, yeah. Okay. Well, the zeitgeist thing you were talking about, it's like there's serial killers, right? Because mm-hmm. Bundy was uh, like in the jail. early 80s. Yeah? Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. He was on trial... Late. I think he arrested in like seventy nine or eighty. I forget how early that happened. Yeah, but I mean, it, but it was ongoing for so long because he yeah. got out and then he was back again. Yeah. And, yeah, you yeah. know, I think the sorority thing had not happened until later on. I think so. Um, because I, I seem to remember him being arrested. Like it feels like that was in the eighties. Like I don't remember Richard Ramirez. Even though he may have been leaving later, I don't know. Yeah, I'm iffy on the timelines. I just looked up the Richard Speck thing because of all. Yeah, he was the a 60, that was a '66. Yeah, yeah, he was in Mindhunter. 
Yeah. God, I gotta <laughs> finish that show. Oh God, it's such a good show. Uh, so the idea, basically, that these uh, that there are killers operating out there that the public, the decent, wholesome American public, mm-hmm. just cannot grasp their evil, especially when psychiatrists are like, mm-hmm. they're just sick people. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's just crazy. So there's this frustration. I think this is also in the uh, in Dirty Harry, where you have uh, you know a, a frustration at the in the populace at large that uh, there's killers out there killing for no fucking reason or some weird reason that only they understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing to protect us, the little people, or the nor- or the regular people, right. from uh, you know becoming their victims. Right. Leads to paranoia and panic. And so it, we we re- we conjure up uh, Eastwood, Bronson, and, and Stallone as our to deal with these things. With yeah. These things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just double checked. Uh, Ted Bundy was the first time he was arrested was in '75. His, his crime spanned '74 to '78 because he oh, got out of jail okay. twice in '77. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, this, so this was not. This was pretty fresh in the in the public's memory at this point. Yeah, time, and at so. this point, we still there was still the residual like the zodiac. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and the trials. Yeah, exactly. The trials for these people go exactly. on for forever too. So. Yeah, yeah. Did did Bundy break out and then murder people? Yes, that's okay. when he did the sorority murder. Right, that's mm-hmm. when the sorority thing happened. Yeah, mm-hmm. crazy bastard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so this movie. Yeah. <laughs> With a, a similar Our crazy not bastard. true crime podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's tell the folks at home. I let's mean, just rename it that. The not true crime podcast. <laughs> we don't understand necessarily what the title means. Or I don't. Do you? No. I kept no. waiting for like no it to idea. be dropped or some reference to it. Nothing. Ten no idea. I take, it as, I take it as like 10 minutes to midnight. Like it's, yeah, but what does it's that coming mean? quick. Yeah. Like it's just it's the story. It's, well, you're you're close. It's you don't have a lot of time. Like it's just that it's there's an ur- it feels like there's an urgency to the like title. Like ten C- to midnight. Like Cinderella. <laughs> exactly like Cinderella. Got it. Ten, ten minute. Well, I mean, you're aware of the Doomsday Clock, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's why I was looking up. I'm like, is that the? But it was seven minutes to midnight. Right. Yeah. And I looked up, but the Doomsday that was the original one, and then uh, or when it was created, the atomic, you know, the, nu- the nuclear destruction clock, and then in '83 it was at like. It wasn't. It wasn't uh, ten to midnight. It was. No, it's I don't think it's ever like been three to midnight. to midnight or something like yeah. that or whatever the hell. So I'm like, where the fuck did they get that title? I don't know how. It just it sounds to this cool. Movie. It does. I it just does. feel like it gives you a sense of urgency. Yeah, that's it's the only 10 thing. To midnight. I, right. I don't it's, know because uh, do you know where your children. Are? I struggled with this too. I was like, is it like ten a.m. to midnight? No, I think it's ten, 10 minutes PM? to midnight. I think or it's ten, 10 minutes to midnight. Yeah, I think you're right about that. But like. It could go either way based sure. on how it's it's because presented. Because we're not the first people to go, what does that mean? Ten is it a police code? Oh, shit. Probably not. I don't know. But it Anybody? Could be. Don't know. We really got yeah. no answers when we Googled <laughs> yeah. this? Nope. No, I Googled it. It was like, nope. Like, so uh, if you, listener, know the answer to why this movie is called 10 to Midnight, I should have done more research. Mm. Okay, so the movie has uh, Charles Bronson as Charles Bronson. I mean, sorry, as Leo Basically. Kessler. <laughs> sure. And he's mm, the that's tough. That's on purpose. Cop. <laughs> Yeah. Works at a precinct, and what was the line at the beginning of the movie that cold starts this movie? I could fart out a better, <laughs> yeah. a better story than that. Yeah, yeah, that was one of them. Yeah, no, it's like there's a killer involved and something. Won't... I'm not a nice man. I'm a mean son of a bitch, and there's a killer out there. And what I, I don't want to catch him. And what I want comes first. Title. Yeah. Cut to yeah. fucking Charles Bronson. Charles yeah. Bronson, which is not a great. That did not. It's warrant. not great. It didn't work. That did not work. That was the most. That opening. He's, 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 I'm not a nice man. I'm, I'm watching this movie. I'm like he's a very nice man. <laughs> like what are you talking about? He's really pleasant. Sure, he's kind of he, he ignores his daughter and everything, and he's you know forgetful and stuff. But he's a very nice he's man. Trying to make up for it, especially because while he's delivering this, he's typing one finger at a time on a oh, typewriter. Right. Right. Like, he has never typed in his life. And he's smiling and he's delivering his line in a very calm, nice manner. Yeah. That's the thing, though. Charles Bronson has a permanent smirk. Yeah. Just in everything he does. does it's he, permanent. Because uh, I haven't seen him in a lot. Does he yell at any point in no. any of his movies? Does no. he get overly excited? No. Because it doesn't feel like he's he a. Never I does. don't think. And not no. that I can visualize right now. He had a panic attack in Great Escape, and that's about as yeah. much. Well, he did, uh, He has little to no, no dialogue in Once Upon a Time in the West. He just plays a fucking harmonica the whole movie. Mm hmm. 
Yeah, in Dirty Dozen, he's like the. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's he not never excitable gets, yeah. in the Magnificent Seven. No, he's no. just like the kind of guy you cast and stuff like this because he's got ice in his veins. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. that's. I think that was it, right? Probably. That's the era of the yeah. uh, '80s Hollywood yeah. tough guy. I don't buy it. He seems warm and fuzzy. Yeah, he does. Like, <laughs> I want to hug this man. He just yeah. seems tired. If anything, he like, does. He's just like, ah, just he, like there's shit. a lot of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like in a nice way, like. Sorry, sweetie. I've had a long day. Oh, Dad. <laughs> dad, you should go lay down. He is cast as somebody's dad in this, so I yeah. suppose that kind that's of very true. contributes yeah. that. Yeah. See, that's so. what I didn't buy. I didn't buy that he wasn't present. He just seems right. loving. Right, he would be there. <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel like he would be at everything. Yeah. 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 He has to make up for yeah. the last time. So he's a cop pursuing a serial killer, and uh, and I get why they have this scene before the opening credits is because he's not in the movie for like 20 more minutes. Right. Right? Or yeah. something. Right. Because we get to meet a guy named Warren Stacy. So what's this guy all about? That sounds serial killer. <laughs> Well, they should have they should have thrown in a middle name though to make it sound more yeah like Warren, Warren Allen name, Stacey Warren Michael Stacy yeah. yeah 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 okay. I like Warren Allen Stacy yeah I like that <laughs> I like that that's good mm-hmm. well as, as you guys pointed out when we were watching it that we we were introduced to him with like a pseudo Patrick Bateman scene oh my god yes, it is very yeah. stoic. He's, For all we know, <laughs> Brett Easton Ellis it's possible, is a big fan yeah. of this movie. It is entirely possibly. possible. Very possible. <laughs> it feels like, I feel a connection between the two. Yeah. Very much so. I, oh, now I kind of want to do like a YouTube thing of like those scenes side by side to see like how much. <laughs> well, maybe it exists. Yeah. Because the only know, difference is, is well that he's not enough? narrating it. Like that's the yeah. only difference. He's doing the whole skincare routine yeah. like in front of right. the mirror, just in his underwear. Like yeah. you know, The no persona is a little different. Yeah. He's One a little more bitchy, a little more whiny. Unhinged. Yeah. He's getting ready yes. for his big night out. Yeah, yeah he's uh, he's a neat, a very uh, neat person. Mm-hmm. I so like that's Patrick his... Bateman. That's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> well, this guy's supposed to come off as a sleaze ball. I think, yes, right? Yes. Yeah. Patrick Bateman could. He had the sociopath side where he could like function amongst normal people mm-hmm. where the, that this guy does exactly. not have. Yeah, exactly. That's bone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My God! It even has a watermark <laughs> and a sense of humor. Warren yeah. Stacy has no sense of humor. no sense no. of humor. Yeah, like liven up, dude. He's a little bitch. Well, he little works bitch. at a uh, copy. You no, know, like I don't know what they do. It's, uh, the, they're he's just typing. He's, he's repair. He repairs. I thought, it was, I thought it was a newspaper. Was it not a newspaper? I don't know what it is. <laughs> so. really. What a perfect cover. He could cover his own crimes in the, in the yeah. newspaper, huh? It seemed like a newsroom setting, didn't yeah. it? Well, it seemed bit. like it seemed like an office. That was just like the office pool, just like, like in from Mad Men. Yeah. That's where yeah. it was. So that's true. I imagine yeah. any yeah. business of that time had that. So they all. That's kind of a good point. Similar. <laughs> so I don't. I don't really know what it was. Somebody was doing some typing. Yeah. But this is where he chooses his victims, apparently, and uh, so he has a, a terrible idea. A, yeah, right, I know. Idea. You don't shit where you eat. I <laughs> no, mean, uh, no, you no, you shouldn't. <laughs> but serial killers idea. do that all the time. It's like the places they're familiar with. Mm-hmm. There's usually like, around there. Like that's there's always I'm that trying to do the Patrick Bateman comparison. Where there's like, all right, here's the map. And here's where they start out, where mm-hmm. you know where they live, because yeah. you, what do you, you uh, what, say, what's the, you want to say the line from Zodiac? You want to say no, it, don't I, you? no, I want to say the do. line from Silence of the Lambs. Like, oh. what, what do we covet? What we see every yeah, day? Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. What's the line from Zodiac? <laughs> Jesus Christ! You walked that line or whatever. The, I walked, I walked it. it. I walked it. Walked it. <laughs> door to door. I and love it. Less than fifty yards. <laughs> I love that scene. Is that true? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> well. uh... Uh, old uh, Warren Stacy, he's got like an interesting methodology because that's, I guess, what the first part of this movie says sure. is his methodology for murder, right? Mm-hmm. Ooh, which that's is a good to title. set up and uh, methodology for murder. That sounds like a uh, trademark, uh, an Ann Rule, or a, that sounds like an Ann Rule book or a Shonda show. The Shonda yeah. show, yeah. Shonda yeah. Land, 2018 Saturday Night Freak Show. Yes, we copyrighted. Shonda sorry, Shonda. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so okay. Get away from me! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shonda, Shonda. You can't take that to Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, it's ours now, <laughs> damn it. And we'll do nothing with it like we've done with every yeah. other thing we've copyrighted. We come up with brilliant ideas. I mean, we, we do. do the uh, it's it's awesome. like URL squatting, you know? You buy it up yeah, and right? hope someone Somebody comes and buys it, it from it you. you. It's yeah, it's true. We had that idea 15 years ago on the podcast. Did, we, uh, Did you lose all your teeth? <laughs> <laughs> I will one day. So all, sure. Is 15 years are going to be 98 years old? Mm-hmm, this <laughs> okay. recording will live You're going to be blue? I'm a boy blue. Boy. So, um... His methodology involves extremely uh, elaborate um, alibi, alibis, setup. followed by smart. 
Mm, yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's a it's the, if nothing else, the idea is sound. Like I'm sure there seems to be like there are certain things that would um, come between. Oh, yeah. What he's trying to do, mm-hmm. but okay. I think the idea is sound. The yeah. underwear flushing is a bad idea. That's weird because that's definitely going to clog a toilet that's a, and yeah. draw attention Plus, to your exactly. evidence. Exactly. No bag that's ever had air in it has just been that. Somebody had a string on that and they pulled that down oh, through the toilet because, because you there's could no tell way because it that, floated back up and then it went back. Down. Yeah. yeah. Well, wait, wait, there's no the, way. Tell the listener home what are we talking about? Right. What's his alibi? Uh, so what does he end up? He goes to the movie theater, and mm-hmm. I, I didn't, not until later on did I understand what he was doing, but he kind of, uh, he sees two girls, and he kind of makes himself memorable to them. Yes. So that they will remember that he was there, that he was kind of being a creep, and that they saw him, you know, after the movie, during the movie, and before the movie. Mm-hmm. So he sets that up, and then once he insults them, they move away from him, he sneaks out of the theater to go do his murder, mm-hmm. and then sneaks back in later. And he has a unique modus operandi. Nakedness. Naked. <laughs> Naked stabbing. Naked stabbing. Naked because, stabbing. because the knife has got to be his penis, <laughs> as Charles Bronson told us. As, uh, like, and in a way, it's like, obviously, yeah. Yeah. Like, well, you that knife is his penis. Of- <laughs> and his partner should have been like, whoa! <laughs> Nobody questions this. Right, they're just like, Nobody. makes sense. All right, yeah. all right, all right. Bravo, good I job. I accept that. Mm-hmm. All right, well, tell me more about this knife is a penis <laughs> theory you have. It, well, ma- it made me wonder if this is a common thing among men, because they were just like, yep. Mm-hmm. I get that. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, really? They that's a thing? They, 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 that's why you have the stabbing cabin? Well, no, I don't know. Okay, so the... Uh, Letting that one pass <laughs> <yeah>. down. <laughs> the, uh, stabbing cabin. The guy, so basically he tracks these women's down. It, or, he, this All the women's. women's. These the women's. women's. All the women's. Tracks those women's down. Is his uh, nakedness in this, this, is it a sexual thing or is it a forensic? My question thing? from both. the beginning. Yeah, I, I think say it's, it's sexual. Both. I still can't tell. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's sexual. uh, It's a power move. And I think it's a forensic Mm. thing. Yeah. Okay. okay. Because he has no, then all the blood splatter he can wash off. No uh, evidence on his clothing. It feels to me that it's more of a sexual thing because I don't think he's thinking about like getting injured during these exploits or being found out. You know, being found in the process of of his murders, being naked, like it feels like he would dress up in something rather than take it all off. Like I, I keep going back to like the clear suits, yeah, but from the Hannibal, Patrick yeah, Bateman the Patrick Bateman, Bateman yeah, and yeah. Yeah. from Han- Hannibal. Yeah, I feel yeah. like that's Dexter. Dexter's what I was thinking Something like of, that yeah. would you know he would add something to it to yeah. cover rather than take everything off and then just go like it'd be he'd be more protected than that mm-hmm. so that's why I feel it's more sexual like, yeah. well as Dexter taught us all killers have a ritual right and this yes. is like clearly a really important part of his ritual yeah. because clearly. he always stops to do that yeah no matter what's going mm-hmm. on yeah and it leads to uh, extremely I don't know sleazy exploitive scenes where he's chasing this naked guy with a mm-hmm. knife Covered in blood is chasing naked women around in forests or yep. uh, that was hilarious to me because there was always a bush or like a branch. There was yeah. always a bush. No matter where I'll tell he you was. That. Because no, you're the, gonna run into the Austin the, Powers. Exactly. Moment. I was like the strategic planning was so Austin Powers. <laughs> it, it was ridiculous. It was it was I'm sorry, I made a good bush joke and we all just went right by it. <laughs> sorry, Sean. I'm Thank sorry, you. a sorry. good bush joke? All right, uh fairly mediocre bush joke. <laughs> okay. Uh, um the Austin Powers thing, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So this movie is uh, from Canon Films, which yeah. uh, two years later made the flip side of this, which was Life Force, which had a naked woman running around for the entire movie. Indeed, it did. <laughs> so indeed, it did. So they're just one, trying to keep. Yeah, it but I bet you see full frontal of her, right? Uh, oh yeah. You see Bush, right? Yes, oh yeah. I think mm-hmm. so. Yeah, uh, there was sure exactly yeah. graphic close-ups. Yeah. I thought in this yeah. movie toward the end where it was like, whoa. You yeah, but you didn't see any there. dick though. No. No, it's mostly well placed bench posts. Yeah, and yeah. outlines. There, even and stuff. still, there is still stuff in the way, no matter what. Yep. Yeah. There's shadowing, and it, there's all. Yeah. yeah, they even shot always. like he was running down the street, and it's all lit from behind. So everything's yeah. dark yeah. and mm-hmm. all that stuff. So yeah. they're still keeping it away from there. Mm-hmm. It was definitely, it was definitely a, a couple, a couple ball shots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There were definitely, balls. There definitely were. <laughs> Well, this is the movie. I think this has got to be the thing that... I don't know if we're uh, accentuating this enough. It has a nude serial killer. Like, right? this like is what a, you lot. Will remember. a lot. A yeah. lot. This is what you will remember if you yes. have ever seen Guys, this movie. Guys, there's a lot of ass in this movie. <laughs> there is a lot so of ass. so much ass in this movie. Yeah. 
Like, I feel like I know what his ass looks like better than his face at this point. Cause yeah. So I feel like I saw his ass more than yes. his face. Especially, like, those later on in the movies in the third act, like, the, like, close-ups in, like, the bathroom yeah. and stuff. I was like, why Why are we doing this right now? Like, yeah. I can't draw. I could draw this guy's ass. <laughs> yeah. Right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's these close-ups later on. Of, well, because that's where I'm like, well, this camera guy has to get kind of inventive. Because he's got, you know, his uh, knife. Mm-hmm. And he's mm-hmm. holding it, like, at, you know, whatever... Armful at dick you, level. That's yeah. What you're yeah. Yeah. Yes. And the camera guy has to be able to show the knife, but not show what's like right next to you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Whatever this. I think they able cut out every like, yeah, every sure. close up of the knife with a whoosh, yeah. whip pan to the dick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's was, just what they did. This might have been Adam Greenberg who shot the Terminator. That's what it said. Okay, yeah, Adam yeah. Greenberg. Terminator mm-hmm. One and Terminator Two, maybe. So he's used. He's to used buff, to dick, huh? Buff yeah. dudes yeah. walking around just. <laughs> There you go. He's figured out the, where all the, the shadows need to be. I guess so. So. Uh, Maybe that's why they hired him for Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> they saw this. We saw your work. <laughs> do you Lovely. think any of this stuff is in his reel? <laughs> look at, ooh, look at the lighting. It's no. like, They're like, yeah, there's yeah, our man. You know what you're doing. Um, so this, uh, this opening set piece uh, is basically, then we introduce Bronson, right? He's the, the guy who's got to come in and investigate this and figure out. You know, how are we going to get Warren Stacy? It's weird. Is it weird to you that we, I mean, if it's a slasher movie that it's introducing and we know so much about the killer early on? That it's not more of a who done it. Yeah. More so we're getting, we know exactly who did it. Yeah. And like everything about his psychology and pretty much everything. You know, like you get to know the killer almost first. Right. I and like then we'll introduce the cop who's I know I think, like it. I like it because I think it puts them on like an even plane of like in this corner you've got this guy, in this corner you've got this guy, and yeah. watch him go at it. You it know? does. It does yeah. feel like a game because we know where each one starts at. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, obviously they have to meet at some point. Yeah. Or they have there has to be the confrontation. So I kinda like where they're setting up each one at each side and slowly they're gonna work their way towards each other. Because mm-hmm. they set yeah. it up throughout the movie. Like you I, as soon as I saw his uh his partner McCann yeah. like looking at his daughter at the funeral and everything, I'm like, All right, I, I I got it from there. I'm like, he's gonna he's gonna like her and then the killer's gonna go after her as well and there's gonna be a whole thing there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So like they're setting that up. So I like where they keep them apart and then they just you know, they're slowly gonna work together. Work towards each other. Do you think that it took some of the suspense out of it, though? Like, I don't know that because there really wasn't any suspense in this. Honestly, I think there's more. I think there might have been more in a whodunit situation. The dorm room scene, I thought was well. That was intense. That was yeah. intense. I'll, no, I'll give you maybe that. for the rest yeah. of the movie. You might be right. Yeah, yeah I'll give that, you that. At least, if nothing else, for that dorm room scene, I was like, holy shit, mm-hmm. this is good. Yeah, they're doing a good job. Yeah, they <laughs> I would, like yeah, it. I agree. I just like the way that they were somehow able to like. It feels like uh, like the nurse as victim in a horror movie mm-hmm. is like a staple of the slasher genre. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so having like uh, you know Bronson's daughter, who's uh, she's from uh, uh, Beverly Hills Cop, right? right Lisa yeah. Elbacher. Yeah. She was yes. in Leviathan and Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, by having her be like a nursing student, I'm like, this is you know, right. <laughs> this is what you do in slasher. Movies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, th- so there's, uh, they set up, uh, that there, well, there's like a personal relationship, I think, between Bronson and the first victim. Right. Yeah. Right? He, he, they mm-hmm. were her, his daughter and her were friends. Yeah. So everybody kind of knows each other and that's how ultimately we're going to get Warren Stacy and, uh, and, and Bronson's daughter, like, you know, is, as the focal point of this, you know, right. mm-hmm. whatever triangle, something like that. Yeah. Rhombus. The, the rhombus. <laughs> rhombus. So, it, is, it is a cannon movie. Bringing it back. Mm-hmm. Bring well, back here's the, the thing. So Bronson knows that this guy is the guy because yeah. he possesses, I think the key uh, to this uh, 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 the theory that he has is because in his bathroom, Warren Stacy has a device that kind of looks like a vacuum cleaner with a flesh color. Like it looks like a drill, a drill. with a, a flesh handle on it. Yeah. Yeah, for, we, okay, guys, sorry we, for introducing no. the term flesh handle to all of you. But <laughs> we, skin tassels, flesh handle. Uh, flesh handle. I but mean, it really does. Flesh, because yeah. The flesh part of it has a has a grip on it. We, yeah. we were talking about this for a long time while we were watching the movie. Yeah. Because, we were. Like, it, we don't know the mechanics of it. It's it. shaped like an L. That's what's yeah. confusing about it. Mm-hmm. Is that like the, the design of it doesn't seem practical. I feel... Go with me on this. I'll go on this journey with you. I feel like 
the the other mechanism that is not the flesh part yeah. is just of what motor. vibrates it's it. Motor. It's just the motor okay. that vibrates yeah. and that's all it does. Yeah. 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 And he's doing the rest of the work with it. Yeah. That's yeah. what it's, that's what it I've just, come up with. It was so clunky seems, and complicated uh, yeah. looking yeah. that yeah. it was And I like the fact that as I, as I was looking at it I'm like that thing doesn't have like an actual plug on the end of it. It's got like a cigarette lighter uh so just doing in his car. So you do it in your car. Which Sex is, toys in the 80s, man. It's I mean, that weird. lines up with him, though, weird. because he's always outside of his house doing yeah. stuff, so it makes sense. Yeah. With the, it it with does. His. If he's constantly uh, being a voyeur, like, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. That yeah. That's where he'd take it. Mm-hmm. Very true. Somebody said it felt like something homemade, which... Yeah, I, think, yeah, I yeah, thought so. Yeah, I was yeah, like, he definitely made that. Everything put in that the together. 80s looked like it was homemade. That's very true. That's true. That is true. angular, and, yeah. What'd you do? Make that car yourself? Why's it got so many fucking angles? <laughs> yeah, so uh, shake that down. My God. Um, but anyway, be better. He owns this thing. You use that for jacking off. <laughs> uh, it's on. I know what this is for. It's for jacking off. <laughs> so he's Throws clearly the man that uh, they want. Oh, he does get emotional, angry when he's like fucking pushing his head into the photos of the, the dead women. Yeah. Look at him, look at him, oh, Stacey. Look at him. He did. He that's, did. He I got... think that's the most worked up he ever gets. I think so. Yeah. 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 Probably he exhausted him. Wilford Brimley. <laughs> That's why he Wolf looks so Bradley tired. Is in this movie, <laughs> the mustache, Betus. Yeah, what are you doing? That's not admissible as evidence. Oh, it's a fucking great, uh, great moment. And uh, so, what? What do you do if you know that this is the guy? They can't get him on anything because there's no physical evidence. Well, you wait. You'll get him eventually. No, no, Sean. Why not, Holly? You plant the evidence. <laughs> why? <laughs> because that's the only way. Because you don't want more because people you to Because you got to save. You got to yeah. lock him up. Mm-hmm. Right, because yeah. you know it's right. Whether it's legal, it doesn't matter. You yeah. know it's right. Mm-hmm. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. And he says as much to his partner at one point. Yes. Mm-hmm. Loudly in a courtroom. Loudly in front of 50 people. <laughs> He's screaming it at him. Yes, outside of a courtroom. <laughs> they went into a different room. Come on. <laughs> that door was open, though. There's it people walking by in the open. hallway. <laughs> well, this is after the killer has already claimed a second victim. Mm-hmm. Yes. Who was very concerned about her toast. Oh, right. Third, this was technically, the... right? Because he killed the... Uh, he killed the, the two, the, two, the, two, and the man her, and the woman, and her boyfriend, and, and, her boyfriend. And, oh, then, yeah. and the yeah. woman's and then roommate. The roommate. Yeah, I mean, it's, two incidences, but three victims total. Yes. Right. Yeah, and apparently because he goes looking for a diary in an empty box. Yeah. Oh my god! But that really, they, but they really don't talk about the male victim. Just pointing that out. No. Well, they yeah. say he was irrelevant. She was right. They don't yeah. talk the about the women. Him at were really all. the targets. He was after the women. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're following the leads. They're investigating. Well, you're going to catch the guy. You got to look at the women. Did we say that she? Did we say the connection? That she machine had to him, attached to him. Uh, to the, the, that she was his coworker. That he like unzipped her dress in the office, and she oh, took right, coffee on yeah. him. That was that was never. That was never really after that scene, it. never mentioned again. Never no. mentioned yeah. again. Because I think well, no, that was the girl that he killed at. Well, right, no, right, yeah. but the, 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 that instance, whether because he's having earlier on, he's having yeah. like minor flashbacks, but what seemed like things he's making up in his head mm-hmm. because it's not in a real. Uh, setting it feels like a dream environment and all that. I think that really happened. I think some version of it did happen. So did no one at her work be like, she ended up dead. This guy also worked here. Mm. Assuming he worked there. Yeah, Yeah, no, he worked there. Uh, And they had some sort of weird altercation and then she ended up dead. But but I'm not going to go. Like, no one at that work thought to come to the police with any of that information. I think uh, Bronson's daughter comes to that exact. Eventually, Mm -hmm. she's like, you know, there's this one guy and he's in this picture that, you know, whatever, at the company Christmas party or whatever. She kind of comes to it. So she, yeah, she eventually does think about it. But it's weird that uh, the victim's roommate, who later becomes a victim herself, doesn't put that together. Right. It's like, oh, yeah, there was this guy. There, he, she says, where well, you think you're going to get the information. They're like, oh, yeah, there's this guy that she worked with. There was a no, there's a guy, a Mexican guy has been calling her on the phone and talking dirty to her. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, that's a fucking red herring. Yeah. Or something. But it turns out that that's also Warren Stacy's MO is to stand outside mm-hmm. in a call box. Phone booth. There you go. A call yeah. box. Call box. And- All right, doctor. <laughs> 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 what year is this Quick, again? Get to the That's call right. box. Phone, phone booth. <laughs> Emergency. Uh, and so, and uh, yeah, call up his uh, victims. <laughs> yeah. What this does, I don't know, other than freaking them out. Freaking them out, and, I mean, obviously it gets him off, un- unless you're all for it, and then he doesn't like Why? that. Mm, yeah. Why did we not see a scene of like a tight close-up of him in the phone booth paying out and he's using his homemade fleshlight like while he's talking to them on the phone. <laughs> Thank God we, we gotta draw a line. And then, and then just Good five thing. minutes of awkward noises. <laughs> or as like, the booth shakes just even, a little bit. Just I have am. him like lift it up into frame. Just show that he he's, has it. 
I saw that. That was in the remake of uh, Psycho, the one with Vince Vaughn. The Vince Vaughn. Oh, yeah. the Gus oh, Van Zandt yeah. one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unnecessary. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. But I'm just saying, yeah, like, I... what else is the point of this? Like, you were saying that if he's... In- like, we don't see him using his flashlight that we know he has. My imagination did all the work yeah, as far as I, that I goes. The movie need didn't to need to do it. it. We don't need to see it. I know no. what it does. I got it. I got Yeah, I was going to say, once I figured it out, I'm just like, all right, I understand. Well, I assume it's a, he's trying to scare them, but it also, because ultimately uh, Bronson's daughter records the phone conversation, yeah. this is used as evidence against him because they have his voice from the interrogation and they have the uh, the you know him on the phone right. which right. sounds huge, the same I have a huge problem with this it doesn't because he's putting on an accent when he's on the phone and he's not when he's in the court when he's in the and interrogation that guy's an room. expert yeah and they have a voice print. He Science does. man. In the eighties, yeah. they had that. Had a voice at, at, one, yeah. at one point, he does kind of fall out of accent. You kind of hear it because mm-hmm. yeah. he gets stressed out. because yeah. uh, she plays along with it yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. He doesn't like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't like it at all. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So there's also a little romantic subplot here. Is Andrew Davis, star of a ton of nineties like Gene Davis, Andrew? Oh, sorry, Andrew Stevens. Stevens, right? there it is. Yeah, who was in the Fury? Brian De Palma's the Fury. The Fury. Anybody? Anybody? Who was the guy who could blow the people Fury. up by thinking about it? Yeah. Oh. oh, what? Oh, oh okay. Fury. Yes, I have heard of this. Yeah, the no? end of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, don't. Okay, I, Kirk don't Douglas do that. is in it. Yes, oh, yes, 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 yes. All right, okay. don't say anymore. Don't say anymore. Um, but so uh, he was the kid in the Fury. He's the love interest in this. He out. Uh, it was. I remember in the '90s, I worked at a video store, and he was in like a ton of like sexploitation thrillers with like Shannon Tweed. Okay. That was a genre unto itself. It really it was. was. Yeah. It and really then was. Shannon like Tweed Secret desires, sex thrillers, something seduction, yeah. basic seduction. Yes. Yeah, I remember those. Oh yeah, he's in a bunch of them. Damn, I remember him on the cover. Okay, or the credits. Yeah, you remember him they were on like him Andrew on the cover. Davis. Yeah. The kind of shit it's not right? Andrew God Davis. Damn it. Stop <laughs> saying that. Yeah. So anyway, there's uh, some oh, yeah, levity so. here. Uh, yeah, and they're bickering and whatnot. Yeah, because uh, he's outed as a police officer at a college party, which is kind of funny because he yells he's got a gun at one point. During the- yeah, the college party in itself was yeah. just interesting. I'm thinking specifically the couple that was fucking on the washer dryer. <laughs> <laughs> that guy had a really hairy ass, and I was bothered really by it. <laughs> that was just uh, that was the '80s. Everyone did. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think you were just born with it in the '80s. Something was in the water. We've seen Van Damme's ass a lot in the '80s. Oh, oh if, he's not if, hairy. That man, no, if nothing else, that man waxed. shaved his ass. Yeah, he that's wax. Well, you know what? Maybe Absolutely. this actor should have. <laughs> oh, I agree. <laughs> I mean, that was a, that was like, a, uh, Bob, no. Bob, you're going to be on That was a crew understand. member okay. who got put into a scene. <laughs> we saw his ass for all of, what, four seconds, maybe? Because and, that, and was like, that was all right. like, that was long enough to be like, that man is a hairy ass. Right. Like, yeah. but so that was that's some, bad. That was them on set going, all right, who's willing to show their ass? And this guy in the back, who's like the fucking grip, is like, I'll do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I get to be with her? Yeah, yep. no, nobody, raises, in. nobody raises their hand, and then they're like, well, sh- show them your boobs. <laughs> Okay, now I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yep, leg warmers still in place. Mm-hmm. Um, so it gives this movie like this kind of like. Did you feel is this a sleazy movie as far as that you? No, I've I mean, seen sleazier. I didn't feel yeah. sleaze. No, you did. I think I. we got enough. I uh, I think it was evened out as far as like especially nudity and all that because you know we got him running around through most of the movie. So I felt it was pretty even out there. There are some ex. Exploitive moments, obviously. Yeah, I was gonna say exploitive. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'd say sleazy yeah, exploitive, obviously sleazy. No, yeah. I felt like it was kind of surprisingly tame when it came to the killing, because like you never actually really saw him stab someone. No, there is all, no it insertion. Was, it was all mm-hmm. below camera. Yeah, yeah. like it was and all he's out very of frame fond of every time stabbing in the stomach. Yeah, yes, he is. Mm-hmm. But you never actually saw it. You just saw that like, it, like it was always out of frame when it happened. Yeah, yeah. and always a bloody aftermath. And yeah. even even with uh, they could have gone over the top with the uh, the last nurse that he kills, Thriller Girl. Oh yeah, the no, girl no. from Thriller is in this movie. No, the one with the short hair. Oh, oh okay. Liza. Where, yeah, not, is that, uh, is she, 
I don't know. She looked just like she Liza looked just Minnelli. like Liza Minnelli. I'm, just I, like I Liza almost Minnelli. stopped to look at him like, is that fucking Liza Minnelli? Because the eyes like are the same. Looks just like her. Because the eye, Liza Minnelli's eyes look like they're sliding, the sliding out of her head. It's the eyes and, and the hair. This woman has to say that uh, Kelly, Preston Kelly Preston rounds Preston. out this trio of yes, roommates. She does. It rounds it out. Yeah. I know it's amazing. Thriller, Liza, and Kelly. Yeah. Quite the trio. Are we missing anything before? Yes, we are. A major thing. Okay, so it's know, basically oh, we're, yeah, we're heading towards a all over massive massacre at the uh, at the the college, mm-hmm. the nursing school. We don't know we're heading to that, but we get there, right? Yeah. Because before that, fucking dude plants evidence, and this becomes like oh, yeah. a major plot point of the movie. Yeah, this is right? interesting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He goes and gets the blood evidence from the original victim and plants it on Warren Stacy's clothes. Right. This causes Warren Stacy to lose his shit in a hilariously over the top <laughs> way. Yep. <laughs> it's wonderful. Absolutely yeah, it wonderful. It was great. No! Oh, his bitchiness comes out. Oh, yeah. He's just so whiny. He's such, he's such a whiny bitch. And oh. it is. This is why he can't get with... Uh, you know, <laughs> He's When's the a, last time you made it with a girl, Warren? Yeah, he's an insult. You never, you have. never have. <laughs> <laughs> so they you, won't have anything to do with you. You said it made it. I could have swore the first time I heard that he said made it. Oh, oh. I was like, wait, what? It was made it or make <laughs> made it, it or something like yeah. that. Made it, yeah. Made it with a girl. Yeah, well, that makes no with... sense. No, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you made it with a girl? Like, like, Jesus like, clinical. Like, who wrote this fucking movie? <laughs> it's clinical until we get to it. This is for jerking off. <laughs> and then he's just like, whoa, all pretenses out the window. Yeah. He also he's called his, his office an ulcer factory. So, I mean, anything's <laughs> possible. Oh, that was and the what cafeteria. Else, what else did he say at where he's Pronounced it very specifically and very. He was at all. On, at all. At yes, all. At all. Nothing well, at all. What about the? He was hooked on morphine. 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 <laughs> That's his. What yes. uh, is? Where's what Charles is Bronson from? Because he has an accent. Uh, Bachinski is, is he Polish? Slavic, it's Slavic, Polish, something, something like that. Because he does yeah. in earlier roles, or at least I've, he's had an accent and everything. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. and it slips out every now and then. But uh, maybe that's yeah. why he is a man of few words in most of his earlier movies. Is that why he played the harmonica the whole fucking movie? <laughs> <laughs> that whole movie's dubbed yeah. anyway. <laughs> that's a great fucking movie, by the way. If you haven't seen it, well, most of these movies are. I mean, uh, Once Upon a Time in America, uh, Dirty Dozen, Great Escape, Magnificent, Magnificent Seven. Seven. Oh, yeah. yeah, classics. Um, Sorry, back to this movie. So yeah, back to this, this movie. <laughs> so this leads to the courthouse uh, section of the movie, oh, yeah. where Court Bronson. House. Well, he's not really like attacked with a crisis of conscience. Stevens, no, because he's all for it. McCann. McCann, his partner, does discover that he planted the evidence on mm-hmm. uh, on Stacy. Yeah. Or he assumes it very heavily, and then. Uh, and then it's confirmed. Then it is confirmed. Yeah. He just says he did, Lately. right? Yeah, he did it. It's like yeah. one of those few good men moments. <sighs> He's like, did you plant the evidence? You're goddamn right I did. Yeah. It does happen like that, right? Basically. Yeah. Well, yeah. not so like fueled, but yeah. yeah. He's like, yes. <laughs> I did. I did it. I did because it was the right thing to do. Because he's fucking guilty. <laughs> yeah. And he needs to go to jail. Yeah. yeah. And how bad should McCann feel considering what happens next? Or mm. later on in the movie? Yeah. Motherfucker. Yeah. What happens later on in the movie? Later on in the movie, we have uh, well. First of all, we, the court. He admit he admits that he planted the evidence, and then he goes into court mm-hmm. and calls the lawyer over after yeah. uh, right mm-hmm. in the middle of a speech. And he's Which, like, like uh, why? Why would he do that? Because uh, uh, obviously he's like, they're going to let him go. Well, do yeah, that. I, think, I think he knows that, and he—he, uh, he, I mean, he obviously knows the consequences are going to happen from him saying this. And everything. he's going to get fired. Yeah, but. he knows yeah. McCann's a straight shooter, and he knows that he is going to have to tell the right. Pilot. He knows, right? He knows mm-hmm. McCann's going to do it. He's yeah. going to tell mm-hmm. him what he knows and everything. Yeah. So I guess he just gets out in front of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I guess if you think about it, him and planting we- the evidence is technically responsible for all those nursing students dying. Oh yeah, that's very true. Well. Yeah, I suppose. Kind of. Everything is in a roundabout way at this point. Only because we have insight into Stacy's point of view, we know that he has selected Bronson's daughter as a victim already. Mm -hmm. So it was going to happen one way or another, but I see what you're saying. It's like it accelerated. Yeah, but I mean, they like he said, they said they had 30 days 
to hold him. They right. could have figured shit out in 30 days, but he was not willing to wait that 30 days yeah. to wait and see. Well, so that's why he tampered with the evidence. They're never going to find anything. The guy is 30 days, perfectly clean. A lot more time than what they ended up having. Like, you got to wait for him. In that case, and this is, I think this is a case. It's what you hear from cops if you listen to enough true crime shit. This is like sometimes you just got to wait for them to do it again because mm-hmm. you got nothing at that point. You yeah. either got to catch him or you got to wait for him to make a mistake. But yeah. what I'm saying is like, the thing he tried to prevent, he ultimately ended up enabling. That's very true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. but he was also able to get the guy to kill it. But guy. after he'd already killed more people. Well, and after he's been fired, so now yeah. he's a private right. citizen and can't fucking do anything about it. Right. So he takes to his time off, Bronson, following Stacy around. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm going to catch him fucking doing something mm-hmm. again. So I'm just going to stick like on lethal him, weapon like, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So Stacy comes up with another, uh, like, uh, clever alibi. alibi. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's, like, his Rube Goldberg of alibis <laughs> is what he's doing. Uh huh. So like, we I'll know set up so much like, complicated shit. He's gonna go after the daughter, right? But right. So he's like, Bronson's following me. I gotta get rid of this guy. What can I do? Get a hooker. Because that's what you do, what right? You, you go like, I gotta throw him off. I'm gonna pick up a hooker, and we're like, what the fuck is this guy yeah, doing? Is he doing? Mm-hmm. gonna kill her? Like, what's happening? Yeah. Uh, seems Takes her to a hotel point. room, gives her a drink, drugs her, drugs and her. drugs yeah. her. So there, it's like, uh oh. So he had like this, uh, the the Mickey, mm-hmm. the right? Mickey. Prepared. I haven't heard it called that sure. in a long time. Right? The Mickey. Yep. <laughs> he slipped. Yes, her. He, sl- he slipped her a Mickey. Slipped her a Colin. Mickey. <laughs> You're right. Uh-huh. The only Wait, Mickey. This again. Sorry, the roofie. <laughs> the only so Mickey he, had... he ever slips any woman. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently so. Yeah. Uh, so he had that prepared the whole time. Just carries it around. This is Mickey juice that he's mm-hmm. like, just in case I need this. Mickey juice. <laughs> Mickey juice. <Right? laughs> no. <laughs> Knocks her out. Heads out the I think we can call window. it a Bill Cosby at this point. The Bill Cosby. No. <laughs> <laughs> too soon, too late. It, I don't no, we don't know. No. Not soon enough. <laughs> no, yeah. It's just... That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. Mm. Way to go, Michaela. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> continue on. Let's be, let's be real. 10, 20 years from now, that's what they'll be calling uh-huh, it. The Bill Cosby? If they're not already. I slipped her no. a Billy. <laughs> I slipped her a Cosby. She, Cosby. Yeah. I slipped her a Cosby. Cosby. I Cosbyed her. Yeah. 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 Cosby. Oh, oh Jesus. I think we're, no, I think we're starting this right now, and I feel responsible, uh-huh. and I don't like don't, it. Don't take on someone else's sins, man. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, you didn't do anything. And his bottle of You're Cosby him accountable, if anything. already set up. Stop it, Colin. Okay. So uh, this fills her up with the cause. Right. Yep. So he gives he gives Bronson the slip. <laughs> What's yeah. Bronson going to do? So he then this is where he heads over to the uh, the school mm. and gets on his suit, his killing suit, which is his takes off his yeah his birthday suit yeah. yeah. So he can yeah. go slashy slashy. And get, uh, <laughs> get you, you just went I like to- how you, you're trying to frill up and yeah. going to kill people. And you just went totally like Eddie Izzard right now. <laughs> you did. Slashy, slashy. did. Slash it, slash it. <laughs> you did. Slashy, slashy. Sexy, sexy. Yeah, 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 exactly. You really did. You really did. You guys at home couldn't see it, but Colin did like a little swishy, he like did. stabbing <laughs> motion. Slashy. <laughs> little sexy, sexy. Oh my god. Oh, fuck. I love it. it is an What's coming next? Eddie Izzard. <laughs> All right, so uh, you were saying that uh, the, they pull off this scene pretty well. I think what it's What happens well. here at the uh, the climax of the film? Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's it's like the conversion. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, yeah. You're Get the him good in job. there. You're there, Bravo. man. You're in the zone. You're in the good zone. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's the convergence of two things. It's uh, it's Bronson figuring out what's actually going on once he finds the like passed out hooker in the bed and everything, and it's the you know cutting away to um, his daughter and all her. Um, roommates and everything in their dorm and all that and so he's trying to call them up and warn them and so uh, he finally gets a hold of them and it's one of those ones just like wait no don't open the door and then it's just like that is what literally what I think she says yeah. and she's like wait oh, yeah. no don't open that door <laughs> yeah it's like ding dong ding dong yeah. well, right. he's as there she naked opens with the a door bouquet of flowers right yeah. so flowers for I forgot her name I forgot the daughter's Lori. name Lori is it Lori yeah. flowers for Lori no mm. she has to sign for it herself <laughs> After Kelly we saw him barely, very slowly and methodically walk up the stairs yeah, naked. Strip and, and then walk mm-hmm, up naked. Yeah. This is a very brave actor. Mm-hmm. I don't know what he did before, Man, but yeah. if this was like one of his earliest roles, he's just like, yeah, fuck, I'll do I it. I didn't look him up. I, I, I I'm didn't, not sure. <laughs> I, didn't I mean, either. he we has should. one of those faces that looks like I've seen him in something. He looks like yeah. Jared Leto. 
like like a Requiem for a Dream era Jared Leto. Mm-hmm. It feels like he was on like I Miami, that or good not looking. Miami Vice, like uh, Magnum PI or Murder She Wrote or something. I don't know. We should have looked this guy up. Yeah, I'm sorry for a guy who's <laughs> naked through eighty <laughs> percent of a movie. We should be like, what else did oh, he no, do? I may have. It may have been like remember, five like, other roles was. where he does. Or this, this is where you find out he actually was in Magnum PI and Murder She Wrote, and that was. Uh, it. I mean, probably he was in the Hitcher, the original Hitcher. Oh. Who the fuck was he in that? Trooper Dodge. <laughs> That does not ring a bell for me. No. That movie. No, all right. But anyway, he uh, he makes his way into the dormitory and then uh, starts his way through all the roommates. First, he kills Kelly Preston right off the bat, right at the front door. <gasps> Again, stabbed to the stomach off screen. What? He was in cruising. <laughs> that explains a lot. Uh, cruising. Are you not familiar with cruising? It's a William Friedkin movie. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. I know that movie. Yeah. Yes. He did that before this. Wow. So, yeah. Right. Okay. So he kills Kelly Preston. Yep. Kills and then her. he kills her, and then he makes his way into the dormitory. He's Thriller Girl is taking a shower because right. Thriller somebody's got to be taking a shower. Yeah. Kelly Preston, Thriller Girl, and Liza Minnelli. Yep. Right, yep you got it. Out. All walk into a bar. What a dorm to be in. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> um, so he gets Kelly Preston, um, and then he kind of grabs Liza Minnelli and gets her on the bed and says, like, where is she? And freaks out on her for a little bit. Ends up and uh, freaks like he if he over, really he freaks out he does but it's like <laughs> he does it well because it's it's scary like this whole scene oh, yeah. at that point it's I'm just I'm I'm in rock for this scene when he's when he's on top of her yeah because I'm like yeah, this is not good for anybody it's really it feels unsettling. like this actress went through some shit during mm-hmm. this point so it's just like woof it is really this feels unsettling. rough for everybody mm-hmm. I salute all the people in this yeah for what they went through but he ends up uh uh. Killing Thriller Girl in the shower, mm-hmm. and then taking out Liza Minnelli, all mm-hmm. while uh, Lori is off in the dark hallway watching all this shit go on. Yeah, mm-hmm. which has got to be, and like we said, like the Richard Speck thing kept coming into my mind. Oh, absolutely! So it just made this whole yeah. thing more terrifying. Yes, to me, to imagine this whole situation, and just um, and so she sees this all going on, and she tries to escape, and then she like runs in, and then. Runs and jumps under the bed. Why doesn't mm-hmm. she leave the from... room? Or oh, because Kelly Preston's body's in front of the door and she can't open the door. Right. Yeah. She can't get out of the front door. And so she run, jumps under the bed, which also goes back to the Richard Speck thing. Because yeah. if you know the story, the one nurse who survived slipped under the bed and right. you know, he lost count of everything. So mm. she slips under the bed and then he's just wandering around the apartment naked in search for whoever might be left. Mm-hmm. The one thing I appreciate, or I appreciate many things about the scene, but one of the things is like, just um, a thing that made it like extra creepy was just the blood stains that oh, were yeah. kind of building up everywhere. And the fact that he, yeah. he's covered in blood. He's covered, yeah. he's like, well, it's not covered. It's like drippy, yeah. right? Like running down his and legs. And he's like tracking it through the right. apartment. Yeah. And it's yeah. kind of building up in certain places. I'm like, this looks like a fucking murder scene. Mm. And it's it does, kind yeah. of uncomfortable. I hated the way he grabbed Kelly Preston's wrist and like p- tugged her body away from the door to open to be able to go out. Oh, yeah. That like something about that and the way she like slid across the floor really yeah. grossed me out. I yeah. Was, it was, it, a, yeah. Yeah. You almost got that. Slick yeah, I didn't like sound that part. Of being yeah. dragged through blood and as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that whole scene was just, just like, woo, yeah. this is a little too real. Yeah. This is supposed to be entertainment, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She does escape, folks. Yeah. Uh, let's she does well, you know, props though for um uh, Liza Minnelli's character for never uh, like giving her she up. Didn't, she didn't give her like, up. Oh, I didn't think any like of in, them did. In pu- no, they didn't. But she was the only one who really got in. Like, where is she? She was yeah. supposed to be here. But like, can you imagine? Her, like in that, like if that was a real moment, like in pure yeah. terror, you'd yeah. probably be like, she's fucking around the corner. Yeah. Like, right, get yeah. off me. She never like, gives she up. Never and gave she never gave her up. Expresses that pure terror, like. I believed her yeah. th- yeah. throughout this scene. And like, she, she did tr- really well. She did, and she even tried to like calm him down. She, she eventually she's like, she's at the hospital. She's at the hospital. Yeah. And she just like was sticking to her guns. Ooh. Like, but, man, that's a good roommate. And I thought that it like it showed with uh, the Lori character. Like, you know, I, that scene made it seem when they cut back to her. Like, you know, the fact that she yeah. knows that her friend is going to yeah. die. Not giving her up, you know. Yes. Like, yeah. Yes. How Which, awful. Yeah. Like, think, well, you got a responsibility now to like yeah. get out and somehow get the, get right. the word and get yeah. this guy. I think the, like the the real contrast is that we started out this movie with some of the worst acting I have seen in a really long time, and then we get to that scene. It's like Jesus, this is 
This is like real. This mm. is this is some real shit right here. It's it pretty good. It was pretty good. <laughs> it's not where I thought this movie was gonna go at all. No, yeah. I didn't know <laughs> no. what to expect from this movie. Yeah, really? I didn't because yeah. I had no idea. I had no. no idea what this movie was. I knew you said it was like it's a slasher movie, and I'm just like okay. Okay. And then I got into it, and I'm like, all right, cool. Well, it does end as a Charles Bronson movie because we have this oh, scene, does. a glorious scene of the daughter well, running this, down the center of a the street. There's the fake out before that, which I think they pulled off rather well because yeah. I didn't know, like, well, if he leaves, how's this going to end? Oh, like, yeah. What are we yeah, doing? Yeah. 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 And, and he's and, like, I'll be back. And he heads and he out. Heads out. And then she's, yeah. you know, leaves her room that she was barricaded in and goes out and he grabs her. She's he going didn't for the leave front after door. All. He didn't leave. I'm like, oh, shit. All right, that makes <laughs> that sense. Pretty good. I did. I did like how they did that though. That they actually made him walk out of the room, so that even the audience thought that he actually mm, right, left. That not was just a nice the killer touch. going, "I'm leaving." That so was she a nice touch. Escapes from him by burning his face with a, with curling, a curling iron, iron, which is a good touch, but it's yeah. like plays to his vanity, right? She's mm-hmm. ruined his face. Yeah. So because yeah. I'm like, why the fuck is he going after her? It can't hurt that much. But he's like, it's got to be the you, right. Because it's pretty. Face. It hurts have you a lot, have you ever been burned oh, by yeah. curling iron? Okay, it fucking right. hurts. No, it does. <laughs> it's it. <laughs> it leaves a mark for a while. It hurts, too. man. If it doesn't scar you, it'll still leave a mark yeah, for a while. Yeah, that's the, it, it looks like hickey marks. It does. It does. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I burned myself with a curling iron. Like, okay. No, somebody sucked on your neck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Deal prepared to take you. That shit does hurt, though. It does hurt. <laughs> well, yeah. then then there's the, pain the shot of... of uh, yeah. Very sorry. He, yeah. So we got a helicopter over yeah, him with a, a light on him as he's naked running down the street. And she's five running. stars in Grand Theft Auto right now. Yeah. Chasing the girl down the street. Yep. And chases her right into the arms of Charles Burns. I loved that transition where it's just behind her, her running, and then he swoops around with the gun. That oh, was yeah, great. I that was great. loved the way it looked, <laughs> and I wanted him to shoot him at that moment. That I wanted, would have been That wonderful. would have been great, because that was a great build-up to... Yeah, why not? It could have been a shocking moment for the killer, and then bam. That would have why been Why did we have to have the whole back and forth? Like, why couldn't that just happen then? It was so well, it felt like It felt like that was the moment, and it yeah. was it like, was. that's awesome. That but was the hero moment. It was. Yes. Because he swoops around with that gun and just looks fucking cool. Yeah. Then yeah. <laughs> that's the same, yeah. Loomis. That's the same Loomis moment. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yes. dirty, yes. dirty Harry moment. Yeah. But yeah. Okay, yeah. So and it's shot from the hero, like down below to see it. Yeah. So why don't they do it? Because they're going to have a dialogue about how crazy he is and how he's yep. going to come back and so bullshit stupid. that doesn't matter. Just so ramblings stupid. of a crazy man. Well, this is, it I guess, gives- this is the theme of the movie or whatever. This is the, the thing that they're trying to express, right? This is that, we're going back to that thing of uh, the the randomness of murder or uh, the fact that, like, these people are, you know, the idea is here that this guy clearly knows what he's doing. Yeah. He is a killer who is just right. fucking evil and wants to kill these women. Right. And, but he knows that he can game the system and say, I'm sick. You know, there's, I hear voices. Right. And this is put into place earlier in the movie. So like they're, I mean, they're obviously, they've gotten to this point on purpose, which Bravo to this movie for setting that up with the lawyer. Mm. He's like, but if he nothing said, else, I'm can not crazy insanity. then though. He argued that point with his lawyer. He said, but I'm not crazy. I don't want to do that. And so like, it's weird for him in the third act when but, he's being held at gunpoint to suddenly. Well, that's his desperation. I was going to say that's a, it's a moment of desperation that he switches right. like that. Cause he yeah. knows he's caught well, in everything. Yeah. Because he, he well he, because he didn't kill her she's the witness who's gonna say like well it's fucking it's him he's going down mm-hmm. so the fact that he is so determined terminator like to chase her down the street is like i'm blah, i'm gonna kill her now publicly and what's my defense for this to get off yeah, yeah. i'm gonna claim insanity and yeah. the courts will let me off and they won't punish me and you can't do anything about it <laughs> yeah yeah bronson's the uh you know what you i guess you know, you want to have that happen, even though we're, we're talking, we're outside the bounds of legality here. Sure. But oh, it's a movie, well. yeah. it's a fantasy. And so you're feeding the audience's desire for uh, like a, a justice or, yeah. you know, a righteous yeah. revenge, right. which well, is a it, no, yeah. they won't. So yeah, blows something that, feels, well, that, something in, that feels good. In that aspect, I really like that he kind of came full, cir- full circle because he already said, you know, sometimes you got to break the law to do what's right. Mm-hmm. And in the end, that's what he did. I mean, that's so I kind of liked that it came full circle like that. You see what he's willing to do. Exactly. I mean, he's willing to plant the evidence, and now yeah. this is an extension of that. And mm-hmm. They're just like, no, they won't. So does that make yeah. him a heroic character, though? Is the question for the? I mean, like, is anti-hero, this- I, would, I think, more than anything. Yeah, he does what yeah. we want him to do. Even though he's now he going to jail, do it. And mm-hmm. He's going right. to jail. Yeah, I don't know. It would have been. I would have been more sold on this ending had they 
had they shot it a little better at the end. Because this, because yeah. he shoots him, and then it like almost automatically cuts to the wide pullback of him with his hands up. Like, yeah, I, I, should I think they mi- they cut out a dialogue they, scene they between him out, and his uh, right. partner. They cut out I something, did, but it yeah. should like yeah. I said during the movie, I'm like this should have started like 20 more feet in with a little more acting to it. Like maybe he drops his gun and drops the gun, puts his, his part, hands up, right? Yeah. and you know you see him giving up and mm-hmm. putting yeah. his hands up and everything. That would have as they're pulling back, that would have had more like yes. impact on me, absolutely. Because it's it's kind of a jarring cut when they get to that point. Yeah. If it's they like, had done bam, that, he's yeah. dead. Let's right, credits. and then credits yeah. and everything. Yeah. I'm just like, whoa, give us a second. If they had done that yeah. a little better, like I would have maybe been more sold on this ending that they that they did. Yeah, but it's a little jarring at the end. I agree. But, you know, the killer dies. Get shot in the head <laughs> with a and the paintball. least gruesome headshot that's ever been. That's on one of the ones where you want the... just a back of the head shot, yeah. where it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. his whole head. And he falls, like falls, in yeah. Maniac, yeah, yeah. the original Cause, Maniac, cause yeah, looked, yeah, exactly, because that looked like a fucking paintball. It right. looked yeah. terrible. I was like, yeah. that's it. That's all we get after yeah. this whole no, build I up to this uh, movie. Blown out back of the head. That's what I wanted. That fucker to die because that would have been a yeah clap clap. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. I wonder if that did have that reaction in 1983. I probably. Probably maybe, because maybe. they have because you know they don't get all the shit we have now or mm-hmm. have seen since then. So that was probably a big moment. Yeah. At that point, yeah. when those credits were rolling, right in, mm-hmm. in the next well, year. I was all, say, what year was Maniac? Was, everyone was like, woo. Nineteen eighty. 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 So yeah, you had Savini doing better stuff already. At the yeah. Same well, time, but who, so. how many people he, this saw Maniac? This audience wasn't watching that movie, right? Yeah, you know, I was Maniac say, this was is... in the gutter, and this was like supposedly you know like right. mainstream kind of movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. What kind of budget did this have? I have no question. idea. Mm, okay. But it's canon, so I imagine that a it lot. was like not, six to uh, ten million max. Yeah, yeah. something like yeah. that. Max. Whatever you need to do, we yeah. will pay for it. Mm-hmm. Been that expensive? Like, I mean, maybe locations were. The most expensive, mm-hmm. or Bronson himself. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what he would. Yeah, maybe it's the point. Yeah, to have him on there. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but it wasn't like there was there wasn't any like car chases or explosions or anything no. like that. So it, yeah, you know, pretty small scale in that sense. Mm. It's the acting talent, Wilford Brimley. I mean, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. His mustache comes Got along. And <laughs> Jeffrey Lewis. I mean, you know mm-hmm. the wigs. Yeah, the, the wigs, wigs. They were out of him. control. That's See, bad. he couldn't have a mustache because he couldn't compete with the brims. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Only one mustache on Only set mustache. when he's there. That's right. Did Bronson, I don't know, maybe, I'm trying to think, like, if he was ever stashless, like, since, or at least since Death Wish, right, which mm-hmm. was, like, 74, mm-hmm. even, he's, like, stashless in... Once upon a time in the... Yeah. Yes, yeah, like in the old. But he's got the harmonica there. standing in for the stash. <laughs> he does. Yeah. That's, that's true. Stash in itself. <laughs> it just became his look. It's like yeah. I'm gonna hang on to this. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. Uh, I guess that's uh, ten minutes. So I tell I you so. what, uh, listener, what we're gonna do is uh, I know. If we, we go can... six more minutes, it, it'll be ten to midnight. I'm oh. just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I was really hoping we get to it at some point. Yeah. In the podcast. <laughs> no, no, we, we'll get to it at some point, like the wrap ups. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. We'll get there. We will make it six more minutes. I was hoping right. Holly will let us know. One of yeah. us is gonna be on. At Five minutes. Let's go. <laughs> okay. So what we're gonna do, listener, we're gonna tell you if we recommend. 10 to midnight to you because you don't know we just told you we watched the movie but now we're going to find out if we actually like the movie and think you should watch it but first we're going to summon our mailman igor and we're going to read some of your mail igor bring us the mail masters masters the mail i've got the mail so many letters our followers are rising rising thank you igor thanks man He's got a mustache on today. Appreciate it. That's there dirt. It's it's pretty much <laughs> pretty much Bronson's. I mean, his little thin pencil mustache. He looked like David Niven. I mean, I'm trying not to notice, but he is naked too. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's always naked. Isn't not he? to. I don't know, sometimes he comes dressed up, depending on what we're watching. You know. He's in costume for the movie yeah. tonight. He doesn't have a hairy ass, thank God. <laughs> All right, so he, uh, <laughs> he just ripped the skin off, like literally. <laughs> He might just rip the skin off to get rid of the hair. I mean, whatever works. He is uh, partially dead. Beauty's pain. <laughs> so. That man doesn't feel pain. This is the best part of the show. <laughs> uh, so we got to remind people how they can get a hold of us. Because we would love if you join the Freak Show family and write in. You That's can right. find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. 
or on Twitter at Sat Freak Show. Maybe by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Somebody emailed us. <laughs> Maybe, but probably not. What? Somebody emailed Somebody us. Somebody emailed yeah. us. Yeah. And uh, on Instagram you. at Saturday Night Freak Show. So, it's first like of all, a spam email. <laughs> yeah. It's like, would you like cheaper car insurance? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, also uh, big fan. To Tebow. <laughs> Hope I'm saying your name Ooh. right. Tebow? Tim Tebow? To, Tim Tebow. To Tebow. To te- to- to- uh, Tostitos? Tatebo. Tatebo? Tebow. Tebow? 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 Tebow. What? Billy I blanks. love your podcast. Hey. Oh, thanks. Yeah. It's like watching movies with some of your best friends, oh. only your opinions are spot on. Look forward to each and every one. Oh, that's really oh. sweet. That's really nice. Oh. I like what? that, Tebow. What? Tebow? Uh, country are you from, bot? Tebowie? <laughs> yeah. We uh, like we, key, we, we word, can't do your word, name. Bot, yeah. yeah, we can't figure out your name, but we love you. I Thank you for writing it. Tom or Tom. Uh, Sean has a problem with uh, accepting affection. love. Yeah, obviously, I'm not good at it. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. uh, know that I appreciate it and I love you. And uh, let's go. get a beer sometime. So about our movie, Ten to Midnight. Uh, Rogerio Barbosa writes in and says That's Charles Bronson's name. best movie. Is Hard Times from 1975. Mm. I I've never What's seen it. I've about? never seen that, but that title sounds like. Oh, no. Never mind. I figured it out. Okay. I was going to say that title sounds like a sex comedy, but that's just because I'm thinking of the hard times of R.J. Berger, that MTV oh. show that was on. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Never mind. Sorry. I'm done. I got you. No. Yeah. I'm sure it's great. <laughs> haven't seen it. Some yeah, thoughts are be better good. left on Yeah, I think yeah. it's <laughs> Walter Hill's first movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm getting like a high school vibe, but I think... Yeah, I'm Hard thinking, Times th- sounds like a, yeah. like a sex right. comedy. I'm thinking, I'm thinking it might be well, like sure. Fast oh, Times. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, fast yeah well, fast the new times. one would yeah. be like Hard Times. Hard times. That's what you would yeah. call yeah. it, yeah. the new yeah. sex comedy, yeah. Well, uh, Fresno Film Buff says that Charles Ooh. Bronson's best movie is Death Wish 3. Now, I've heard this, that this is the that most the canony. Is that the quintessential? Uh, yeah, yeah, the most like out there, wacko uh, Charles Bronson movie, so we'll so have to check this out. Death Wish, not a canon movie, but the ones after yes, were? Yes, the sequels yes. are. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so about our episode, The Meg, uh, Gary Gilstrip writes mm-hmm. in. Love the name. Gilstrap, sorry, Gary Gilstrap. Right Even better. Gilstrap. Sounds like a email. Stanley character. And he says, I loved your episode on the Meg. Is it me? Or did it seem like they spent 80 minutes trying desperately to be an actual movie and then just give up and say, fuck it, Big Shark? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I'll give I you that. I wish they had. Fuck it, Big Shark. <laughs> well, I was waiting for the That's fuck it, Big Shark. That's where all that, like, like, romantic... Will they won't they subplot came from? Is that well? No, no, I know. I realized that yeah. they were doing that, yeah. but I didn't. I never yeah. felt the "fuck it, big shark" moment in this mm-hmm. movie. Uh, well, you didn't think there was a big, big enough shark. They, they didn't well, I, I thought his like argument was shark. they were too big. Right? No. You were saying they were too big. No, they because were too big. Well, no, they were too big. They didn't do anything with the big shark. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't do enough with the big shark. They didn't scale up the rest of the movie for the big shark. They didn't do enough with the big shark. Well, Gary also says, anyway, love you guys and love the show. Looking forward to episode 300. Oh. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. If you have any ideas of what we should do, write in. <laughs> yeah, we're, <'cause laughs> we're lost. To commemorate the occasion. Because we have no idea. We have no idea. We've been talking about it for some time. Still no idea. No idea. We thought we did. Yeah. Head banked on it. Don't I bought know anymore. I bought us cigars. We're, but I don't know right. what we're doing. <laughs> you know, we're bad at math. We smoke cigars so. on the podcast for about 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's going to then we'll puke for a little bit and it'll be fantastic. You'll get oh, to hear you it live. Come on. That's the episode we go around and do like the autobiographical stuff. So um, this oh. is one, This is Michaela. She started whatever watching one, movies and uh, one suggestion is that it's 10 to midnight right now. Uh, oh, it's ten to it's ten to <laughs> Shut it down. Turn it off. Yeah. That's it. We're done. It's all done. Uh, Robin Linneman Silverberg writes in and says, oh, "So in the Meg, there's no severed floating male genitalia." I wish there's not. This is a would have made it better. Piranha three yeah. D would have made it better. Um, Geeking poetic says, "I haven't seen it yet, but I really enjoyed the book. It looks like they're going for a comedic over the top route with the movie, though. I'm just not feeling that at all. You'd nope. be wrong. Yeah, you'd be. Yeah. You'd be don't wrong. don't go in thinking that you'll be no. Don't go in thinking uh, that you're gonna have fun or enjoy that. Movie. Yeah. yeah, Piranha three D. That's just go watch that. Yeah, yeah. That's all you need. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, Jaws. watch Jaws. Or jo- yeah, why not? Watch, watch anything shows. else. Deep Piranha, Piranha, yeah. Piranha three double D. Mm-hmm. No, no, yeah, maybe no, not. It's fun. Yeah, okay. Uh, Michelle sixty one seventy five says, "I laugh my ass off watching the Meg quote just keep swimming quote." I did well, laugh funny. at that. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I did laugh at that. I was like, this is, I was like, this back. is product placement, and I hate it. Well, that's that's, that's what I, my thought was. I laughed at it. Yeah. This is I Disney being too. like, we have to be everywhere. 
Uh, Basin Voorhees says, uh, yeah. Summer of Cannon? How about Summer of Sharks? I'm down with that. Thank God summer's over. That's all. It'd I probably guess. be yeah. more successful. Goodbye, Summer. Yeah. Welcome fall. Yeah. yeah. And the fall of Holly. Fall of Holly. <gasps> oh. Halloween. <laughs> Halloween. It's a Halloween. All right. Uh, so that brings us to the best part of the night. And that's when we go around the room and tell you what we thought of the movie. So- Kayla. <laughs> what did you think about 10 to midnight? 10 p.m. to midnight. 10 p.m. 10 a.m. To, to midnight. Or 10 minutes a till, till midnight. See, it should be, this is semantics, it should be 10 till midnight. Yeah. That would end a lot of confusion, I feel yeah. like. And you um, following along at home, this is actually recording at 8 minutes to midnight. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, so if we're the doomsday <laughs> clock, we're, we're fucked, huh? Yeah, what happens at midnight? Doomsday. The, the world ends. <laughs> And midnight, uh, uh, our podcast ends. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, we got to get this in. <laughs> Wrap it up, guys. <laughs> so I didn't really know what to expect going into this because Summer of Canon's been not great so far. Um, but this one was like ending on a high note, I thought. Um, it had a little bit of slow moments in the middle of like cop drama and stuff. But overall, I really enjoyed the like hunt for a serial killer. And I liked that they incorporated um, real stories like Richard Speck, like Sean was pointing out, and Ted Bundy. Um, and like an actual like legit details about those cases too that they incorporated into this because like uh, I mean we're all pretty big true crime fans and like there's nothing more frustrating than when you go to watch a movie based on like a really famous serial killer and then it's nothing like them mm-hmm. so like that's kind of cool that this isn't based on any of those but like the details they incorporated are still correct um, so I really liked it um, I, I, I found it pretty entertaining to watch I had some good suspense and tension towards the end uh, I mean, I can't say I've seen anything like it, really, because I don't think I can recall a movie where I've ever seen, like, a male protagonist naked this much, ever. Not this much. Like, ever. Um, so, yeah, I think I would definitely recommend it. Sean, mm-hmm. what do you think? Mm-hmm. Um, 10 to Midnight is a legit fucking movie, mm-hmm. and I was yeah. I was surprised. Because, um, like we all said, I didn't know what to expect for this movie when I came into it. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it did very well. It had... Uh, I, it, Slow moments, yeah, I guess you could say so, but I was like, I was with this movie from start to finish. When you start the movie the way you do with fucking Bronson on a typewriter and then cut to, like, fucking titles and shit, I'm just like, oh, okay, this is what we're doing. And, uh, you know, you actually get, like, a good dynamic between the characters. There's some really good scenes in this movie. Um, I mean, I would have ended it, like, just a a little, slightly better filmmaking at the end of this movie would have, like made this a fucking home run, but it's a fucking... I, I really enjoyed watching this movie tonight. I recommend the hell out of Ten to Midnight. That's a, that's a slasher movie, and that's a good one. Mm-hmm. It's bloody. There's action. Uh, there was suspense in a lot of the scenes. Like, I'm all for this, so I recommend Ten to Midnight. It was very good. Yeah. Holly? Um, yeah, no, I'm I'm totally with you. I thought it was it was such a great movie. <laughs> it Like I said earlier, it, it made me really... It made me really laugh because the beginning of the movie, I was like, this is going to be shit. This is going to be so terrible because the acting was horrible. The The weird opening scene, it, it, it was just, or the cold opening scene, it was just odd. The I was acting like, in the in the like first yeah, 20 minutes of this movie really is bad. not good. It's really bad. So I was like, this is going to be... This is going to be a terrible movie, but one of those like funny, terrible movies. And it was for like the first 20 minutes or so. And then it started to slowly get better. And by the end of it, I was like, this is a really fucking good movie. And it, it kind of gave me everything that I look for in a freak show movie. I had the slasher. It was really funny, terrible at the beginning. But then it ended up being like a pretty good movie at the end. And it just it kind of delivered in everything that I, I wanted out of it. So, yeah, I would recommend the hell out of it for sure. It was awesome. Good times. Colin. Five minutes. <laughs> oh, shit. Five minutes. Uh, so, um, yeah, I guess uh, when I first saw this movie, it was one of those things that kind of stood out as being like, it seems like it's a cop movie. You know, when you look at the cover of it or the poster art, and you're like, it's Charles Bronson. And he's shooting people. And, yeah, he's going to be, you know, a tough guy. Like, there's not really a whole lot to his character. In fact, there's one area which I, would, none of us commented on it, so maybe it wasn't a big deal. It kind of was to me that it seemed like they they cut a scene out, which was the heavy dramatic scene where he had to go talk to the fucking uh, oh, yeah. parents. Of, <laughs> talk to the parents of the yeah. murder Of the girl. murder victim. They, like, they yeah. make a big deal out of this, like, oh, shit, I knew her. She, you know, she mm-hmm. used to hang out with my daughter. They were friends. 
You stay in the car. I'll go talk to him. Hello, Gene. It's been a long time since we've seen you. Can we go inside and talk? <laughs> Cut to, or dissolve yeah. to right. later. He comes out of the house. The heavy dramatic yeah. music. Yeah, and I'm like, did they just go... Well, Charles can't handle, you know, he can't do that yeah. scene. He can't handle that. I, th- yeah. I think they set it up that way, but they really just needed to set up the daughter. Yeah, I, I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. That's why you can do it, but it just felt yeah. like they, it, no, this I agree. is a scene that you have. That's why I was like, is this going like, to come back later? Like, it felt really weird. Yeah. yeah. He's a very uh, stoic presence, Bronson. I guess Indeed. it's like, you know, he was a gigantic movie star for most of his career. Cannon gave him a second life where he was, you know, one of these tough guys. Uh, I just don't know if he is as well known now. You know, like, do people go back? Like, what's the movies that you remember him for? It's going to be Death Wish or the 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 old classics, you know. Westerns. But not yeah. so much like his tough guy movies aside from maybe Death Wish. I mean, I suppose they remade The Mechanic, so, you know, uh, there's that. But um, he's got a presence, I suppose, more than he has, like, a, a, a big dramatic range. He's just a your rock. He's the steady mm-hmm. guy mm-hmm. in the movie while all this crazy shit's happening, and that's why it's cool that they decided to put him in a slasher movie with a nude slasher, <laughs> which is like, huh? I mean, that's what makes so the bizarre. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Once you find, once you see this movie, you will remember that you saw the naked slasher movie uh, where the dude's just like you know killing everybody um, in the in the nude, um, but. I mean, I guess it's a slasher movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think so well, it doesn't sure. follow the pattern, right, of a slasher film. It has a character who, you know, kills people in ways. Maybe it's just the way that it's shot. Seems like it refers to the language, the cinematic language of mm. the slasher movie of the time. That's why we're thinking it's that way. He is killing, you know, naked co-eds. But yeah, it doesn't really have the the, the, the structure yeah, yeah. of a slasher film. So I don't know. I mean, it, it, like I said, that's why it kind of feels like a hybrid. Yeah. But mm-hmm. we're also not taking his point of view at any point in this movie or anything like that. Like certain other things that would point to it being like a certain type of slasher. But yeah, yeah, you could be right. Yeah. And it has that, you know, again, it has like the the theme, which I think is shared with Dirty Harry, which is that, you know, society is fucked. Uh, there's, you know, we need somebody to take the law basically into their own hands because these people are just right and, you know, uh, completely justified in their, mm-hmm. uh, their thinking. So he's almost, he's a vigilante at the end, which yeah. it, it ultimately is the, the, uh, the, the death wish thing, which I think is a kind of a, it's a dangerous thing in society. But it's awesome wish fulfillment if you see it done right in a movie. Yeah. You just have to be able to separate those two things because um, it is cathartic. You know, you go through, you see this guy. Clearly, he's evil. You know, there's no uh, question about it because you've seen it in a movie. You know, you don't have to have it proven in court. You know it. You've seen it. Um, so there you go. I would recommend Tender Midnight. Definitely. You got to check this out. It's coming out from, uh, this is the plug, right? Yeah. yeah. Shout Factory. Yeah. Yep. Or Scream Factory is putting this out, I think, early next year. Yep. We saw it from uh, Twilight Time uh, on the Blu-ray. I will say on the cover, which I didn't notice until right now, um, yep. <laughs> it is it is 10 minutes till midnight. Just yeah. just oh, yeah. based on the... Yeah. Yeah. We were discussing that off mic when you were down here, Sean. Ah, that is yeah, a just, foreign that. movie poster. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Works for me. Yeah. So I'm inclined to check out some other uh, Bronson Cannon movies. I'll let you know how that goes probably in the months ahead. I got to see more of like what this guy did, especially with this director. If this was his favorite guy, yeah. maybe we'll get the same kind of thing. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, for a sleazy exploitation slasher police movie, you could do worse than 10 to midnight. Check it out. And that's midnight. Mm-hmm. And there it is. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> it. Okay, cool. Beautiful. Uh, so that means uh, next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Sean. What are we watching next week? I like to get the double yelling. <laughs> uh, next week we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna revisit a filmmaker that oh boy. we. Uh, I think we all like down here. Uh, okay. We're gonna watch uh, John Carpenter's Village of the Damned. Ooh, oh, right. Boy. You're in a Carpenter thing lately, huh? <laughs> yeah, some. Yeah, yeah, there's some some relation or another, but mm-hmm. yeah. I almost picked that like two months ago. Yeah, we're gonna watch it. Next Exciting! Week. Exciting! All right. all right, Village of the Damned.